Vibrations and Waves. I'd like to step back briefly from the story of electric electromagnetism to think about a broader kind of physics, the description and the understanding of the object that vibrates. We could think of the pendulum. We could think of a guitar string vibrating back and forth, anything that vibrates, and the associated phenomena of waves. Vibration and waves are everywhere you look. Just think about it. It's happening at the microscopic level. It's happening at the microscopic level. Many, many objects in the world wiggle back and forth, and uh, when we start to think about how waves work and how oscillation work, we will discover that we have a new language for thinking about things and events in the world that is a nice uh, counterpoint to the language that we've been stuck with, which is the language of the protocols. Which is a language of the particles. We've been so focused on the particles because that's where Isaac Newton started us. We are thinking about the world. We are thinking about the world is made of objects, and that's good, constructive, productive way to think about things. The study of electricity and magnetism have maybe led us to think about nature. As having this field aspect, and fields are more cons、uh, continuous, continuous. The fields and fields are more continuous. Then you have these wiggles in the fields, and suddenly you realize that understanding waves might be useful to be able to describe what's going on there. Broader science. It's really a collective things. If you look at one object, well, there you have a.、Uh, the, there you. You have your point-like object. It's when you have a collection of the objects that you start to think about the wave. That's where waves arise. They always arise when you have a bunch of connected things, and then you have some disturbance that can propagate and spread. People have been studying waves forever. Suddenly, ancient Greek were interested. It's it's a natural human curiosity to look at the the waves on the beach and uh, and uh, 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 to wonder about them. And boy, it looks like a physics. It seems as if you should be able to describe this thing. You should be able to understand how it works. They seem to be repeatable and regular, and you can draw a picture of them. It just feels as if this should be. Sh It just feels as if this should be good physics.、Hmm. By Maxwell's time, waves were extremely well studied. It was a part, it was a part and parcel of the, what it meant to be a physicist. You knew about Newton's law. You knew about waves and and how they behaved, what they looked like, and how you made them.、Hmm. They were definitely on physical things, right? You could see them with your eyes. You could measure their properties, and so we ought to be able to make sense of the story. Ah, I I will always go back to my uh, can, uh, canonical wave, which is my dropping the pe pebble into the pond. I like that one. It's easy to visualize. You can see in your mind th this little ripple spreading out, and you can start to think about the ways that we might use to describe this. Physics begins always with description. Kinematics was the beginning of the classical physics idea, and so I'd like to discuss the kinematics of wave. What do we need to just describe this thing? Then, um, once we can describe it, we'll start moving to deeper understanding and explanations. If you look at the water and you think carefully about what's happening, there is a medium. There is this material. That's the water itself, and the water molecules are moving up and down. They are being displaced, and they have equilibrium points. They want to be at at the flat level of the pond. If you push the water down, water pressure lifts them back up again. If you pull them up, gravity pulls them down. Right. The ripples that you see are. Arising from the displacement of the particles from their ordi ordinary position, and that's really all we are going to need to describe 
But when we step back and we see the wave, we don't have to think about water. You can, you can squint your eyes a little bit and not worry about what the water, water is made of and、uh, just watch the wave. How big, is it? How big is it? Where is it located? How wide is it? These would be the kind of things that we would want to do to describe it, right? Okay. In the end, I will define a wave as a self propagating disturbance of anything.、Hmm. It's a self it, it, it is a self propagating, it has to create the next piece of itself. So the water molecule here wiggles its neighbor, which wiggles its neighbor, and that self propagating disturbance. The wave isn't a thing. The wave is not a thing. It is not a piece of water or a bunch of pieces of water. The water is a disturbance of the water. <laughs> I'm sorry. The wave is a disturbance of the water. It is one step removed, and we are going to whistle with a little bit. Is wave sink or not? When I have a classical wave, an ideal, ideal wave, I almost always think about the medium, although we already have this one example of the electromagnetic wave where there is no physical things, no material objects that's wiggling. It's the electric field, it's electric field, which is an abstract entity, which is just getting stronger and weaker over and over again. Right. When I say it's a not thing, what would the mass of the wave be? It doesn't make any sense. The wave doesn't have mass, the water molecules have mass, but the wave, the disturbance is just what it is. Does it have a position? Well, that one, that, that one is a little bit touchier. touchier. If you think about my wa water waves that is, that is expanding, I'm, I'm seeing the little ripple that. That heads outward, it does have a distance from the origin. At any given moment in time, I could take a snapshot and I could say, Here is a wave. And I would point to the big circle. I would know what the radius was, but I wouldn't know exactly where the wave is. The waves are always spread out, it's a feature of the waves that they tend to be spread out. If you go out to the ocean, you can see the wave, and as they come toward the beach, they are spread out parallel to the beach. Then behind them, there is another wave, and behind that, there is another wave. If you take the grand picture of the ocean, you will see this undulation traveling across the surface of the water. It's not localized at all. The entire ocean is one gigantic traveling wave. Wow. The location of the wave may or may not be well defined. It depends on the situation, and if you think about the motion of the, of the, motion of the wave, there is a really important and subtle thing going on. Picture,、uh, picture a water wave traveling by and it's moving from left to right. You are out in the ocean and you see the big wave. It's very clearly identified as it travels along. Now, Think about the medium, the water. The water is going up and down. Now, you might think that the water is also moving from left to, from left to right. If you, if, you are sur surfed, if, you, if you have surfed at the beach, you might imagine that the water is flowing sideways right along with the wave, but it's not. I want to convince you of, the, the, of this because、uh, it's an important idea about the waves. Water waves near the beach unfor unfortunately become a non linear. They are no longer ideal waves, and there is some slowing around the water at the beach, which really makes up、uh, with our relationship because, um, uh, I'm sorry, which, which really mucks up with our intuitions. Okay? So there are no longer ideal waves, and there is some slowing around of the water at the beach, which really mucks up with our intuition because we think of waves, most of us, by their experiences at the beach. If you, if you just go a little bit away from the break, if you go to the region where they are just big waves, but they are not breaking, and you are sitting on, in the little lava dinghy, when we 
when the waves goes by and uh, you get you go up and then you go back down again hmm. so you you don't start surfing you just bob and if you are not convinced of this I have another example that convinced me and I remember that I used to struggle with this one a lot what is that what is that okay just be patient Think of a field of wheat and it's completely smooth and flat. Then uh, over at one edge of the field there is a luster, la there is a luster, luster, maybe a little puff of the wind or person walks by and shakes the wheat. Now you're standing up, up above on a platform and you're watching. You can you can just visualize this this wave of wheat. It's just a ripple in the wheat that's going to spread from one side to the other. It's very clear, very visible, and you could take pictures of it. You could say, ah, there it there it is now, and now it's moved over here. You could see the waves. You, you could see the wave as it moved from one side of the field to the other. Now I ask you, does the wheat move from the one side of the field to the other? Is there a flow of wheat just because of this wave? It's completely obvious that every stalk is stuck, stuck right where it is. It just wiggles back and forth and ends up right exactly where it started. Uh -huh. Water Water is really doing the same things out in the deep oceans. Most waves are ideal in the sense of that the, the motion of the medium is one direction and the motion of the wave is in totally different direction. Here is another example and uh, one that many people have personal experiences with. The wave at the stadium. Somebody stands up and the whole, whole row of people all stand up and then sit down. Then their neighbors shut up. Uh, stand up and sit down. The neighbors, um, the, uh, then their neighbor. It's wave. It's self-propagating disturbance. You uh, you wait until your neighbor moves. There is an interaction. It's a social interaction. It's an agreement between you and your neighbor that now you will stand up and the people are going up and down. Now human being is moving in the direction of the wave. The wave is rippling sideways throughout the stadium. But nobody makes one micro of movements in the in the direction. That's a property. Of, that is a property of the waves, and uh, that that medium is doing one thing, and disturbance is doing another. Wow. I want to recognize again that waves are uh, that that wave is an abstract thing. It's our description of what it, what's going on. It's not a physical entity, it's not a particle. Now, if you watch a wave and look at it, you might think that it's behaving in some respect like a particle. Let's think about the difference between the, these things. A particle has a mass, it has a position, it has an existence independent of any other material object. None of these are characteristic of waves. Oh yes. Waves require a bunch of objects that are connected together and they, the waves are spread out and can have all sorts of different ways of being spread out. Wow. It is nice to think about a wave that is lo localized. This is going to help me visualize what's going on. My favorite example for this one is a slinky. Remember those toys? I had a lot of slinkies when I have when I was a kid. If you stretch out a big, long slinky on the flat floor, at first it's motionless. That's a medium. The medium is 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 a me metal of the slinky. Now you go to one end, and the 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 other end is held fixed, and the, at your end you start to wiggle the slinky. First of all, jiggle it. Jiggle it, jiggle it up and back and stop wiggling. Can you visualize what's going on happen? What's going to happen? There will be little bit. Uh, there, there, there will be this little blip on the slinky and sideways blip, and that blip 
will start propagating because of course the sideways pull the metal it's going to pull on its neighbor which pulls on its neighbor and of course those neighbors are pulling the blink back blip blip back you have a restoring force and also the propagating propagations so you have a restoring force and also this propagations this is a beautiful little wave it's a little pulse and it travels from one side of the slinky to the other if you squint your eyes you you might say well the look that looks like a little toy something a little to toy stuck that's moving from one side to the other if you weren't looking too carefully, I might fool you myself into thinking of that, that this little blip was a material, physical object. It does things that material objects do. It goes to the end of, uh, end of the slinky. It will recoil and come back, come, come on back. It does, uh, it does other things that aren't common for material objects, such as uh, it will fade away over time because of the internal friction. Hmm. You can see that there are both connections and dis distinctions, okay? So you can see that there are both connections and distinctions, but you can fool yourself into thinking that the way we somehow particle like will keep coming back to this because um, in, a in nature, many waves phenomena people have argued is that the wave or is that a bunch of the little particles as when Isaac Newton tried to decide whether light was a wave or a bunch of little light particles flowing outwards. When you were looking at the wave and you want to describe it, one of the things that you might describe is how to go down to the level of the medium itself and uh, see the medium wiggling up and down, up and down, and you say, okay, that has a frequency. I can measure that in hertz, cycles, or wiggles per second. The frequency would be a description. Is that a description of the medium or the, the wave? Well, they are both in intimately connected with one another. When we are talking about the partic particular wave, it will have a definite frequency associated with it. It will also have a usually characteristic length if you think about those waves on the ocean. As long as you have one and then another and then another, there is there is going to be a, a typical distance from one peak to the next peak, right? Wavelengths. We we'll call that the length of the wave. Be careful, it's not the sideways length of the wave running towards the beach. It's a distance from one peak back to the next one. That's a wavelength, and then you can talk about the velocity of the wave. Now, we are going to be very careful. We are thinking about the wave, not the medium. If you go to the stadium and you watch the ripple, it's the speed at which the ripple moves sideways through the stadium. That's what I meant. That's what I mean when I talk about speed of the wave. I do not mean the speed of the people who stand up and sit down again. That is more closely associated with the frequency of the wave. We keep these ideas separate, and the speed is the thing that really belongs to the wave itself. The speed arises because it, because of the interactions. The more tightly coupled the piece of the medium are, the generally speaking, the faster the wave is going to ripple. Because when you jerk on the pieces, if it is tightly coupled to the, its neighbor, the neighbor is going to respond very quickly. That's how you make a fa fast wave. Is it, 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 that uh, you make things that are more tightly connected? Right, right, right. If you t if you take that slinky and you jiggle it and get a wave that's traveling down it and you want to make that uh, wave travel faster, what do you have to do? The one thing that you might imagine is that is just jiggle your hand faster, just jerk it forwards and backwards in in half time. They that that will not do it. What what you see what you get is wave that has a, the medium jerking up and down faster, but the pulse will continue to travel at the ex exact same speed as it did did before. Hmm. You may believe that uh, you may not believe that. Um, you have to go try it, buy a slinky and check it out. I have a computer simulation of this. It's a uh, it's on website from Colorado. 
phet.colorado.edu and you can look at lots of the simulation of the physics events. One of them is a wave on a string and you can convince yourself at least, at least with the simulation that jiggling your hands more rapidly will change the frequency. It might change the wavelengths because it, if, if you jiggle up and down you really quickly and then up and down really quickly over and over again, then there is not time there is not time for the first pulse to run away from your from you before the second pulse starts running away from you. The two pulses are going to be close together. You're going to have a small wavelength if you have a rapid frequency. But it has no impact on the speed at which those ripples are traveling away from you. It is a little bit con con counterintuitive, but a fact of the nature that you can verify for yourself if you want. Mm. Wow.